Hello everyone, welcome back to Christian Penguin 1990. My name is Matthew. We are continuing with uh, Why Pray on Day 10. This uh, day is titled 80 and 80. I suppose it could, have ha it could happen only in North America. In this part of the world, pragmatism is so entrenched that Christians run prayer experiments. We put our trust only in methods that work. A church decided to see how important it was to pray before contacting neighbors. They selected at random a neighborhood of 160 houses near the church. They divided the area into two sections and asked the congregation to pray intensively for one section of 80 houses, but prayer was not a high priority for the other section of 80 houses. After a period of prayer, the church planned to contact all the houses in the neighborhood. The church secretary would ask the people in the neighborhood if they had any prayer needs and would like to have someone from the church call on them to discuss those needs. <clears throat> Excuse me. After the set period of prayer, the church secretary contacted all, hundreds, all 160 homes, asking the same question and using the same approach. By phone, she told them who she was, explained that the church was willing to include all who lived in the neighborhood in their prayer program, and asked if they had any specific prayer requests for which the church could intercede. She also offered to have a couple call if the um, neighbors had matters they would like to talk about for prayer. When she called the 80 homes that had not been prayed for, she found that only one person responded with a prayer request. But when she called the 80 homes that had been deliberately prayed for, she found to her amazement that 67 of these families responded with prayer requests and more than 40 of them asked for visits from the church. This is what Jesus had in mind when he spoke about rest. When we are yoked to Jesus and we begin on the foot he begins with, that is prayer, our task is lifted up in the wind of the Spirit and supernaturally sails along. I learned this lesson in a unique little sorry, can't talk. I learned this lesson in a unique way in my work for Mission India. In by the way, that's uh, John DeVries is talking about that, not me. While attending a prayer seminar, I was challenged to choose if I were a pastor between hiring a full-time director of music or a full-time prayer for the church. It took me only a moment to decide that I wanted the professional intercessor. I got so excited about the idea that I challenged the Board of Mission India to change the job description of one of our staff members to be exactly that. When the board balked, I threw out a sign. If God would bless this strategy so that income would go up beyond anything we would have expected from hiring a fundraiser in the coming year, we would know that this was God's will. The board went along with the challenge, and Mission India hired a full-time professional intercessor. This person, in turn, started our India Intercessor Program, involving nearly 7,000 families who received mailings twice a month, highlighting several specific prayer requests for each day. You can see this info on their website, missionindia.org, by the way. In the first year of this massive new prayer ministry, the mission grew substantially, far beyond what any one fundraiser could have been expected to do, and God has been opening unexpected doors ever since. I shared this story with a friend of, on, in India who then told me that God had led him to do much the same thing in the same year of 1992. He had labored with his little mission in a city in the heart of India for about 10 years, and fewer than 20 little house churches had started. He and his wife were burned out and tired. He then decided to hire professional intercessors and to begin his mission work in prayer, not with human effort. A few years later, he had 22 people reporting for prayer, um, for prayer work every day, and the mission exploded to more than 160 little house churches in those few years. Are you being carried along by Jesus on the wind of the Holy Spirit, or are you trying to carry Jesus along? It may be so it may be so simple a matter as being out of step with the Savior. To be yoked is to be in step. And when that happens, we find that the task is easy and light, for he is pulling with us. When prayer is first and work is second, we are in step with Jesus. The work arising out of prayer is we shift from working in human power to working in divine power. Are you attempting to run your spiritual life on a human power base 
starting with human effort and planning and then trying to bless your efforts with a word of prayer. Okay, the discussion question for you and your household uh, this today. What would your reaction be if your church proposed to hire a professional intercessor? And something to meditate on. The most important step is the first step, the step of prayer. Um, for me, that discussion question is very easy. I would be very excited to welcome a professional intercessor to our church. <clears throat> um, just because a lot of people, they... The old excuse is they don't really know how to pray. They don't know what exactly to pray for. So to have somebody that is a professional intercessor um, that would say the prayer like it, they felt it needed to be worded to get the point across. But then again, Jesus is our professional intercessor. So to hire somebody, you know, it, it can get a little spiritually confusing, but I wouldn't be against it. Um, I don't know how y'all feel. But hopefully y'all are enjoying these videos for Why Pray. And like I said, once we finish the book, um, after day 40, we'll go into chapters, uh, chapter a day of Proverbs, which um, I did that challenge last year. And it opened my eyes to a lot of stuff, stuff that I've totally forgotten after reading the Bible. Um, just I was like, wow, I cannot believe I totally forgot that that was in there. And while it was mainly written for the Israelites and Jews, we can still use a lot of the information in Proverbs for our own lives, to better enrich our lives to um, what the Bible teaches, which is righteousness, by the way. It does not teach denominations and so on. But, yeah, so once we finish Why Pray, we'll go into the uh, Proverbs, a chapter of Proverbs a day, and we'll go from there after that. If, um, I don't know, if we'll continue with something like that, like maybe a chapter of Psalms a day or something, but after we definitely finish those we're probably going to do a lot more apologetic videos but like i said hopefully y'all are getting a lot out of these videos hopefully they're opening your eyes to how important prayer is and um the days to come as well it'll open your eyes to it and just hopefully god is blessing y'all with these videos is strengthening your faith and just um hope y'all have a blessed day and i will see you guys next time when we cover day 11 until then god bless and have a happy life